Welcome to our focus, or our clarity and focus session. Uh, the key here, eliminate objections and close sales. So one of the things I want to talk about is um, that uh, people are constantly right now in this time that we are in, uh, uh, at the time of this particular presentation, we're still coming in lockdown. We're still in the lockdown mode. We're coming out of lockdown, but people are buying like a lot of people are buying. So just to give you perspective, uh, um, our champions, a lot of our champions, are closing deals consistently. In the last month or over April, uh, more than two hundred thousand dollars of the deposits were made. Uh, with and this is only about seven or eight of our champions. We have one hundred and forty champions, and so we have a lot more people making sales in this time. So understand that people are closing deals all the time. People are asking people to pay. People are saying, "Yep, I need to do this. Let's get this going." So understand that people right now are buying. They are out there, they are buying. If they're not buying from you, then they're gonna be not buying for some of the reasons I'm about to share with you. So, uh, objections, let's look at objections. Right, so why do we get objections, right? Number one, because there are doubts or unanswered questions in the prospect's mind. That's the number one reason why we get objections. So there are doubts or unanswered questions in the minds of our prospects. Number two, because the prospect wants to, wants to buy or is interested in buying but needs clarification, they want a better deal or they need, or the needs, they need a third party's approval, right? So they need clarification, they want to buy, right? They want a better deal or they need somebody else to approve the deal. And the third reason uh, why the objection occurs is because the prospect just doesn't want to buy, right? Pretty plain and simple. But those are really the three reasons why objections uh, occur in the market. But, but the number one is because people have doubts. Uh, they've got unanswered questions in, in terms of in their mind that you need to answer, right? So uh, you'll get objections for these reasons, right? If you have not qualified the buyer, if you don't qualify them, right, to, uh, to uh, uh, be okay or if they're a fit for your product or solution, they're not going to buy it, right? You haven't determined that they can afford it, right? You haven't determined that they can afford what you have to offer. Uh, you, deter you haven't determined the need or the interest level in what you have to offer. So you haven't determined how important how, how important it is to, to do this. You've not established rapport. So you haven't established a relationship or rapport or that, that idea of likability, right? Uh, you've not established any credibility in what you have to offer to the client. So they don't see credibility. You're not showing case studies, testimonials. You're not showing uh, workflows. You're not giving an, ex an example or a demonstration of a walkthrough. Uh, but credibility is really important. Uh, you've not established trust, right? They just don't trust you. Don't know who you are. Not sure uh, if, uh, if uh, I, I like you. And I don't trust you. Right? Uh, I've heard this story before. I've been burned before. Why should I trust you? Okay. So uh, the other thing is you've not found the hot button or the real problem. You haven't found the real reason as, why, as to why they absolutely must and need to buy what you have to offer. Uh, your presentation is weak. You have a very poor presentation structure. Uh, uh, your delivery, uh, the professionalism, all that sort of stuff creeps in to uh, giving people doubt in their mind. One of the things that we teach as champions we is we teach people how to pitch, not to propose for a deal. If you're doing proposal, a proposal is an exploration. An exploration means as a consideration, and in most cases, the consideration is a price, right? So, so the key here is the reason why I teach people in champions to present the solution is so the client can have all their questions answered they can professionally see that there is a prepared thought through structure that is relevant to their key objective and outcomes that they're looking to do. So this way, a presentation becomes very strong as opposed to having a weak presentation where you might not have provided, asked all the right questions, answered the right uh, uh, things in your presentation, and all you've done is given a price, where right? you made one offer and a yes or no decision, or it's like a comparison, right? The presentation is weak, very, very important. Uh, you've not anticipated the objections in your presentation, overcome them before the prospect can raise them. This is really important. You want to eliminate all the objections before the customer can raise any objections. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, a little bit moment, in a moment. Um, uh, these are the real objections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover the actual real objections that people have. Like there are the common objections, I can't afford and all those sorts of things. However, these are actually the real, the things that are going on in the, in the client's mind in terms of the real objections to the sale. So number one, don't, they don't have the money. They just don't have the money, right? That's number one. Number two, they've got the money, right? Uh, uh, but they're just, <laughs> they're just too cheap to spend it, right? They've got the cash, but they're just cheap, right? 
uh, can't get the credit needed, can't get the uh, finances needed for the deal, right? Can't decide on his or her own, can't make the decision because they've got to go refer to somebody else, right? I'm going to talk about how to handle that in a moment. Doesn't have the authority to spend over budget or without someone else's financial approval. So some people have a financial budget. If you're dealing with marketing directors, some marketing directors can sign off up to $100,000, no problem. Anything over $100,000, they've got to go and get approval, right? Some marketing uh, directors, they have budgets. I've worked with marketing directors that have had millions of dollars in budget, so they can make that decision. But I've worked with a lot of marketing directors who are not allowed to spend any money without approval, right? If I'm dealing with a marketing director. So understand that they need the authority to spend money. There is a decision maker who's going to sign off on your idea, right? Thinks or knows they can get a better deal somewhere else. So they think, they, they think you know what, I could do something better somewhere else, right? Um, uh, has something else in mind, but they won't tell you. They've got another idea or another thought. They're listening to you, but they're really not going to tell you that they're thinking about something else, right? Uh, doesn't does not want to change vendors. I already have a supplier. I don't want to change. I already got somebody helping me out on this, and I don't want to change. Right? Uh, wants to shop around. Hey, uh, you know this is great. Uh, you've given us the investment or the price, uh, but look, I just want to have a look around and see what's out there, and see perhaps somebody who can do it cheaper or better than you can. Right? And if I can't somebody can't find somebody cheaper or better, then I'll come back to you. Right? So they want to shop around. These are the real objections. Too busy with other important things at this time. I'm too busy. There's a whole bunch of other stuff we're having to deal with right now. This thing isn't the most important thing right now uh, for me to go ahead with, right? That's the real objection, right? Doesn't need or thinks he doesn't need your product now. I don't need it right now. I think I really don't need this. To, need to do this right now. So I think I'm just going to pass, right? The real objection, okay? Um, thinks or knows the price is too high hey, this is way more than what I thought would be, or hey, this is a little bit high for what I believe uh, the value of what you're offering me, right? That's, a, that's an objection, okay? So, more real objections. Doesn't like or have confidence in your product or service. Don't like or have confidence in what you've got to do, right? Doesn't like or trust or have confidence in your business, right? As a company, how you look, how you represent yourself, right? Doesn't like or trust or have confidence in you. They don't like you, they don't trust you, and that means they're not going to buy from you, right? If you're not likable, right, and you can't build that trust or build, at least build that rapport and that trust, they're not going to buy from you, right? Uh, they should, they, and they shouldn't buy from you if they don't like you. And it's really weird that a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of the buying decisions are going to be made on the fact that they like you. They want to work with you because they like you, right? That's a lot of the reasons why some people buy. It's a big reason. So... <clears throat> The big objections you have to overcome. I'm going to walk you through some of the big objections you have to overcome. And if you can overcome these objections early on, then, uh, then you're going to be in the right sweet spot to generate a sale. I'm going to walk you through a really simple closing technique, right, that kind of uh, uh, illuminates the objections, like gets real clarity in the customer's mind and moves them into the buying zone. So I'm going to share that with you. So the big objections that you have to overcome. Number one, why is this important? Why are we sitting down and talking about Facebook ads? Why are we sitting down talking about AdWords? Why are we sitting down talking about reignition campaigns? Why do I need, why is a sales funnel really important? Now, not why it's important to you. Why is it important enough for them to sit down and talk about this thing right now? Why is it important? So the real need, the real problem that needs to be solved here, that's what we need to understand. So the question I ask is, I often ask is, hey, so I just want to be clear. I just want to establish why is this important, right? Why this uh, strategy, why Facebook, why the funnel? Why is it important? Now, the reason why I'm asking this question is so that they can actually give me the answer. They're constructing this answer. Now, these first three questions, that I'm, these first three objections, you need to get these objections out right up front, right? You need to deal with these right up front. You need to deal with the why this is important right at the beginning. Because if they ask these questions in their mind, if they don't verbalize these questions, then you're a dead duck, you're not gonna make the sale, right? If they verbalize these questions, if they say, why is this important? Now you have to justify why Facebook ads are important. You have to justify to them why, it's, why this strategy or why this idea is important to them. If you have to justify it, you're gonna lose the sales opportunity. So you've gotta answer this question early, early in the piece. In fact, I like to get this question out right almost at the beginning of the sale. 
So I just want to be super clear. Tell me why this is important to you right now. Why Facebook? Why funnels? Why this? And so then they're telling me why this is important, right? Uh, Facebook's important because that's where the market's at. Facebook's important because we can be more visible. We can you know, target more people. We want to engage people socially. These are the reasons why it's important, right? So in their mind, they're hearing why this is important. Not why you're telling them it's important. Why they're saying that it's important, right? What they say is important is important. What you say is important is not important to them, right? It's important to you, right? So understand why is, it, why is this important? Why Facebook? Why this, right? Next question is, why me? Why have you chosen to sit down with me to go through this process? Well, John, the reason we sat down with you is because you've been professional. Uh, you shared an idea uh, on the video that we saw. Uh, you covered some aspects that really answered the question. So we're sitting down with you. The reason why we're sitting down with you is you've approached us professionally. You've uh, you've gained our, uh, our interest in what we need to do. Uh, um, you seem to, you know, the fact that you're offering a solution, right? All of this is why they're selling themselves on you. Why me? Why have you chosen to sit down with me, right? Why me? Yeah. So why this thing, why Facebook ads, why funnels, why email, why SEO, why Google My Business, why uh, direct mail, why reignition campaign, why sales automation, lead conversion, lead management, why, 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 why this thing, right? Why is it important? Why me, right? Well, you've been professional. Uh, you've, uh, uh, we like the fact that you're, you can solve this problem. Uh, the fact that you have articulated very clearly the thing that we need to be focused on. So they're selling themselves on me, right? So they don't, you don't want this question asked in their mind and you don't want this question brought up in the middle of your sales presentation. Because any of the first, these first three questions are brought up in your sales presentation, you're a dead duck. You're not gonna make the sale because it means you have to now justify. Right. The other thing with why me, why not another, uh, why not another uh, ad agency? Oh, we haven't thought about that. Oh, we're talking to you. Oh, shit, we haven't thought about that. Right. In the middle, if they're doing this in the middle of a presentation, not verbalizing, you're a dead duck. You need to bring this out right up front. You've got to get this out there. If you do this, this is going to help you make the sale because they're telling you why they want to buy and they're telling you why this is important. They're telling you why they're choosing you. They're telling you the next thing is why now. Why is this an absolute must right now? You could do a whole bunch of other stuff, but I just want to know why this is important now to get things now. On a scale of one to 10, are we at 10 out of 10, we must do this and get this solved? Or we are five out of 10 or a one out of 10, where we like the idea, but we're just you now, we're really not ready to pull the trigger. We know we need to do something, we're not ready to pull the trigger. Why now? We need to establish the why this is important, a must now. Is it a 10 out of 10, I must do this, right? Or is this something that you like the idea of and you're just exploring? If I get that I like the idea of just exploring, I'm out. I'll go, thanks for doing this. There's really no point in wasting your time, right? We've got, I'm out, right? So if, for example, in a presentation scenario, when I go through this, you know, why this, why me, why now, and I get to the why now bit, um, I, I want to sit there and say, listen, We've all been here before, right? You know at the end of this, that we have a presentation, we're gonna ask you to work with us. So if at any time uh, throughout this presentation, you feel that what I've shared with you or something isn't right or you're not feeling it, I'd like you to say no, we will stop this presentation and then we'll move on and we'll stay friends. Is that okay? And alternatively, if I feel that this isn't for you or I feel that this is gonna be suitable, I'm gonna stop this presentation and call it quits uh, and we can say no. So you can say no and I can say no, we cool? And so that way you take the air out of the expectation of, hey, somebody's gonna to have to pull out a credit card or write a check at the end of this conversation, right? We've all been here before. At the end of this, I just wanna make this very clear that you can say no at any time. You can say, hey, John, this isn't for me. And you can pull out and we can say friends, right? At the same time, if I feel throughout this presentation that this isn't for you or this isn't gonna be right for you, then I can say no and we can call it quits and we can part as friends. Is that okay with you? And they go, Yes, you've just taken this expectation, the air out of the presentation, right? They can say no, you can say no. So why now is important, right? Scale of one to 10, 10 out of 10, we must do this. We must put this in the place, right? We don't have a plan B, right? If it's not a 10 out of 10, then you need to stop the presentation right there. You need to establish this uh, a couple of times, once before, and you need to establish this during or getting into the presentation, because like I said, there is no point spending this time, right, only to know that you're heading down a path where a person isn't gonna make a decision, right? One of the best ways to make sure that you're very clear 
in uh, when somebody makes a decision to buy your product or service is you want to uh, the way i set up a, a, a presentation is i at the very beginning say, look i'm going to share with you a structure a solution a plan based on your objectives your reasons to why that's important and number two the bottlenecks that you're experiencing that's stopping you from getting forward do you understand that that's what we're doing here this is your plan not our plan are you cool with that they go yes so at the end of this presentation i'm going to ask you to make a decision on whether or not you go ahead with that plan so can i uh, can i just ask your permission that you will make a decision at the end of the presentation yes or no and they go yep if you like the idea it makes sense we'll go ahead boom i've just got permission right at the beginning of the presentation that they will make a decision at the end of the presentation in fact i established that even before the presentation, even my discovery, I'll say, hey, look, we're gonna put this plan together at the end of this plan, I guess the only thing I will do is gonna ask you if we can work together. Are you okay with that? If you see that this is a fit and you see this is the right move, then I'm gonna ask you to get this, this, this started. Are you okay to do that? They're gonna go, yes, great. So remember yesterday I talked talk to you and asked you a question that at the end of this presentation, if you like this plan that we put together for you based on your objections, based on your objectives, based on your uh, uh, reasons as to why this is really important and more importantly, right, uh, eliminating those bottlenecks so you can see the gap that can be reached from where you are now to where you want to be. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and make a decision to move forward. Are you okay with that? And they will say yes to that three times. Yes, I'll make a decision uh, the day before. Yes, I'll make a decision. And yes, I'll make a decision at the end of this presentation, right? So there's so the, the red, they know at the very beginning. So somebody's asking a chit chat here, question. Um, yeah, so Chris is saying, if they say they'll consider at the end, do you ask all this before the appointment? Yes. Uh, and at the appointment? Yes. And before the presentation? Yes. Right. I ask before I get to the presentation that I'm going to ask them to buy. I ask them at the presentation before I start the presentation that I'm going to ask them to buy. And then at the end, when I get to my demonstration, I'm going to ask them again, hey, remember at the very beginning, I said that, you know, if you like the plan, uh, I'm going to ask you how to work together. Are you still cool with that? They go, yeah, great. Right. So now I know they're going to make a decision right, all the way through. They're sitting there going, if I like this, I'll buy this. If I like this, I'll buy this. If I like this, I'll buy this. Yes, I'm with you, John. Right. So this is a very simple way to help people actually buy what you have to offer, right? In this process. Uh, Michael says that's such beautiful phrasing. I was amazed at how much it relaxed things in a meeting. Yeah, right? it does. It actually relaxes the person knowing that, Hey, at the end of this, if this is cool, then we're going to work out how we work together. Right? That's the thing. So next objection we have to handle, right? The next objection we have to handle. I need to think about it. You know, uh, I need to sleep on it. Uh, I need to make a consideration. Um, uh, I've got, you know, I just got, you know, we don't make decisions on the spot. Uh, we like to sit down and think about our decisions. Um, um, so give us some time and I need to think about it, right? Get back to us in a week. Uh, we'll let you know, right? I need to think about it. Now, I want to just deal with, I need to think about it for just a moment because this is how you handle uh, this objection. The way to eliminate this objection is what I just said. At the end of this presentation, we're going to ask you to make a decision and you're okay with that. If we've given, if we, this is your plan, this is your program. At the end of this, if you see how this is going to work for you, if you see this, this is going to help you to hit that objective that, you, that is your objective and outcome, the only thing we're going to do is to go ahead with this. Do you not agree? They go, yeah, we agree. Okay, great, right? So then when we get to here, I need to think about it. And it is a common, common, I don't see this as an objection, by the way. I just see this as a clarification. This is them just wanting to ask some questions, right? I need to think about it, right? And so rightly so, if they're going to spend tens of thousands of dollars with you, or if they're going to spend twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 with you, they should think about it, right? They should make that consideration, right? So you're going to have to, uh, um, handle this particular question. So sometimes the only thing to think about is a simple thing, right? And I'm going to show you how to handle this. Like I'll, I'll explain how to handle this right now. So if I get it, I need to think about it. Say, so great. I really appreciate the fact because I understand you need to make careful consideration when you're making an investment like this. So do you mind if I just ask you a couple of questions just to clear, to clarify those areas that you may have questions in based on the program that we have outlined for you? Is it this section here where we talked about how we uh, do the messaging, the marketing? Are you okay with that? Yep, you can see how that works. Yes, absolutely. Great. Uh, is it the uh, is it the uh, the process, uh, the solution, uh, 
uh, the results or the delivery. You have questions around you okay? With that? Yep, no, that's really cool. That's fine. Yep, okay, great. And so, is it the um, uh, is it how we work together? How we do the onboarding? How do we get that uh, structure going? No, nope, that's all really cool. That's uh, awesome. Great. So I guess the only thing we need to do is then, if you don't have any questions about the program, uh, how to get started and how to get this thing going, you're all okay with that. I guess the only thing we're going to do is to get started. Yes. And then they'll go, well, oh, no, we need to, we still need to think about it. Okay, great. So we're cool on the program. We're cool on the thing. We're cool on the thing, right? So I'm going to give you, it because ultimately I need to think about it. One of the driving factors I need to think about is money. Well, there's actually two driving factors, right? Number one is the money. Number two is I need to talk to somebody else, right? I need to think about it is a qualifier that I need to talk to somebody else. And this is, an, this is another objection that I'll handle in just a second uh, to eliminate that process. So I need to think about it, right? Great, you need to think about it. So I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, um, I understand you need to make a decision and I agree that you need to uh, uh, be mindful of what you're doing here because you're making a significant investment in your business. And ultimately we've got a plan here that is there to deliver the result and bridge the gap, remembering that this is the outcome we're aiming for, right? You understand the investment, you understand the outcome. What I'm gonna do is I, if I give you a call at nine o'clock tomorrow morning or 11 o'clock tomorrow morning or four o'clock in the afternoon, which would you prefer, nine or four? I'm going to put it in my calendar, I'm going to call and I'll be able to answer your questions. And then at the end of that, you can decide whether or not we go ahead. Is that okay with you? And they go, yes. You want to follow up within 24 or 48 hours. Anything after 48 hours, 75% of what you shared or presented to them is gone. 75% is gone after 48 hours. So they've forgotten half the reasons why they're buying in the first place. Right? So you've got to close the deal within 24 to 48 hours. Anything after three days, forget about it. Right? If they say, get back to me a week in a week's time, right? then what you've got to do is you have to nurture them. You have to keep them hot for a week. You can't just go, great, I'll call you at 4 o'clock or uh, uh, 9 o'clock on Friday. You can't do that. Right? What, you, what you've got to do is go, great, let's make a time. Right? If there's anybody else that needs to be at that time, we can answer those questions and we can decide whether or not we get this thing going. We cool? Yes. So now what you've got to do, if it's five days out, you have to send something almost every day, right? Reminding them of the benefits of the reason, the objective as to why they want to do this, why they said they want to do this, why this was a must in the first place. So you're going to uh, maybe uh, give them some frequently asked questions. You're going to give them a case study. You're going to give them some testimonials. You're going to give them a walkthrough, a flow chart. You're going to touch base with them every day or every other day until you get to the five days because you have to keep them warm to why they were doing this in the first place and if they see you regularly in that period of time they're not going to forget you so that's how if somebody says hey give us a call in a week or give us a call in two weeks time great right if you've exhausted uh the questions if you haven't asked for the sale at least seven or eight times and you've done that and then still i need to think about it then you want to make sure if it's two weeks out that you're actually gonna uh, nurture that sale to keep that hot. Otherwise you have to start all over again, right? Now here's the other thing, 24 to 48 hours, not, 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 not longer than that, 24 to 48 hours because 75% of what you show them has gone out of the head, they've gone into their business, they've gone into work mode, right? So you need to be really mindful that if you follow up, you have to follow up within 24 to 48 hours. So the way you do that is really simple. I can call you 11 o'clock tomorrow morning or I can give you a call at nine o'clock on Thursday. Which would you prefer? Nine o'clock on Thursday, great. Or 11 o'clock tomorrow morning, that's fine. Great, I'm gonna put that in my calendar. I'll see you at 11 o'clock, boom, right? Then what you do is you send an email. You have to send an email, right? An email either just before, like the uh, 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 day before, right? Like, like at the end of the presentation, this is great talking to you. It was awesome uh, going through this. Here are the key points that were really important to you that you said that you must have. These are the things we're going to focus on. At the end of the day, I'm really looking forward to working with you. That is an email you must send out if it's a follow-up for 24 to 48 hours, right? If it's a 48 hour follow-up, send a video. Say, hey, I just want to put, uh, just be clear. Here's what we talked about. Here's some of the things we, we walked through. Really looking forward to working with you. Tell them that you're excited about the idea of working with them, right? So you must do that piece. You can't just wait. Most people, they just wait, they let it go, you lose the money, right? The question I have to ask you is how important is it for you to close that deal, right? You know, if it's worth thousands of dollars, then this little thing that you do is gonna be worth doing to make sure you close that opportunity. Right? So I need to think about it. That's how we solve the only thing about it. Uh, the price is higher than I expected, the money. The money, the money, the money. 
right? This you know, is too more expensive. So a couple of things to eliminate this objective right up front is I used to tell people I'm going to be the most expensive person you hire. I used to tell them that, that I was expensive. I'm not cheap, right? We get amazing results and we're the most expensive in the market. That's why people hire us. That's why you're going to want to hire us because we're the best, right? We're the most expensive. What you want to do is you want to give a price range for people to take into consideration. Say, listen, you understand that any investment in our services is going to roughly start from between here and here. Are you okay with that? You do that before you get to the presentation, right? Any investment in our services, just to give you perspective how we work with our clients, our average clients invest at this level to this level. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with those, that price range, right? So you know they know the money before they get to the sale. They don't see the money at the very end of the sale, right? They've got an idea of how much this thing is going to cost, right? A range, right? So you understand some of the things we do at Champions, we have a, uh, we have a, a sales funnel. And in the sales funnel, it tells the price right up front. Any, any client that works with us, you look at a minimum of three and a half to four thousand dollars per month, right? Um, uh, um, so, you know, understand that this is what our fees are going to be, right? So we tell people what it's going to be, right? Oftentimes when people tend to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's $4,000 a month, I say, no, no, it's $48,000 you're agreeing to. I tell them you're going to be spending 48 grand with us. You're not going to spend four grand a month. The program that what you're investing in is $48,000, not four grand, right? You're saying yes to $48,000, right? And they go, oh, I, I get that. I understand, <laughs> right? Now, here's how you handle the money close, right? So let's say I'm, you get an idea to think about it and you really the only need to think about it is the money. So here's how you do this. And here's how you close the deal. And here's how you get the person to agree to buy on the spot. This is a really simple tactical thing to do. What you want to do is, you, let's say I need to think about it. Say, great, all well, the price is more than the thing. So listen, are you okay with the program? I'm just be super clear about something. Are you okay with the program? Yeah, everything's okay, great. Look, let's just put the money aside for a second. I know it's the money, right? So let's, let's just put the money aside for one moment. And I just want to ask you this question. Other than the money, is there any reason why you would not go ahead with this, in this program that we put out, this plan that we put out to hit the objective? Other than the money, right? Putting the money aside for a second, is there any reason why you would not go ahead with this program other than the money? Now, if they say, no, no, uh, yeah, we want to buy the program. Oh, well, yes, we'd like the program. We're just, you know, we're just an issue with the, how much it's costing us, right? If they say that to you, right then and there, they've bought your program. So remember, here's the, here's the phraseology, right? Say, so, hey, level with me. Is it about the money, right? You're know, thinking about and doing that. Is it, is it about the consideration on the price? They go, yep, great. Look, let me make this easy for you. Let's just put the money aside for a second because I don't want the money stopping you from making more money, right? Let, you know, this is an investment. This is not a cost or an expense to the business. At the end of the day, we're trying to give you an ROI. We're working on an ROI for your business. So let's just put the money aside for a second and not let the money get in the way of you actually making the money you want in your business, right? Because that's the ROI. That's a direct measurement ROI that you're expecting out of this, right? They go, yeah. So let's put the money aside. So level with me, right? Program is okay. Strategy is okay. Solution is okay. Yep, 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 yep. So level with me. Is there anything other than the money that would stop you from buying this or investing in this program today? No, it's just the money. Okay, great. Now we can bring the money back on the table and now we deal with the money. So how we deal with the money, this is how I've dealt with money and it's an easy way to deal with money, is say, listen, we have the initial installment in this program, the startup, uh, the, the, uh, the startup fee is $5,000. What I'd like you to do is, you know, if $5,000 is too much, right, right now is something that obviously you take into consideration of cash flow, how much can you afford or how much could you put towards the setup fee, right? And they'll go, well, can we do two and a half? Can we do 50%? And I go, great. Let's do an initial installment of two and a half thousand dollars and we'll tack on the other two and a half thousand dollars in 30 days when you make your first installment on starting the program. Are you okay with that? And they go, yes, <laughs> right? So there's, there's a couple of options when you're offering people to buy. I didn't say, let's cut the price by five. Some people will say, listen, uh, if it's five, can I give you three to get started? Like you just said, yeah, we want to do this, but it's the money thing or it might be the deposit thing. So what if we gave you three to get started? Great, I'll take three to get started. And then we'll put, take the balance on in 30 days to get this thing going, right? The other way with the money, you can say there's three options that you want to give people to, uh, with the money, right? The first option is pay for the whole thing up front. Save 10%, pay for the whole thing up front. Do you want to save 10%? You can do this in one hit, take care of it, and all is done, 
right? Save 10%. Would you like to do that? No? Great. So initial installment, right? And we can do the, the uh, we can do the payments over three months. Which would you like to do, right? You give people option, yes or yes, right? Third option is we're working together as a 12-month program. We will finance the program for you interest-free over that 12-month period, right? So initial installment and a monthly a monthly fee for uh, this program of this much per month, right? Which would suit you best? One, two, or three? Or I like three, I like two, I like one, right? Some people want to get the money out of the way all up front, and you need to let them do that, right? So if it is about the money, then negotiate your setup fee, uh, how you get that paid. Or if you don't have a setup fee, negotiate an installment to get things set up, right? Uh, uh, to get things going, right? So you are in control of the deal, not the client. You're in control of how you get paid, not the client, right? So at the end of the day, you make these options, saying, what if we did that? If we want to do that, great, let's get started on that. Uh, if that's not possible, what if we actually uh, 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 didn't charge a setup fee, but we spread the setup fee into the payments for the program? So you don't have to pay the setup fee, you just pay the initial installment to get started for the first month. Will that be, does that work for you? Oh, great, right? So we're not paying the whole setup fee up front. Then you're making a sale. So the whole idea is to make it easy for them to buy, right? And sticker shock is something you can eliminate by letting people know what the price is right up front before they even get to the sale. So in their head, they know that the range of your investment is going to be between here and here, right? The next. This is one of my favorite ones. I need to talk to my partner, my boss, my wife, or husband, right? This is a big objection for a lot of people. So let me just give you some, uh, uh, this, this objection, by the way, uh, when we're working through the sales process in Breakthrough, because we were doing deals of $60,000, this objection was the number one objection that we used to have to handle. It, was, it wasn't the money, it was this objection. This, this, I've got to talk to my partner. I need my practice partner. I need my wife. Uh, I, you know, I can't make the decision without them. Okay. So, um, uh, what we did was we made sure that anybody that wasn't, that needed to be there in the conversation when we're making the sales presentation was there. So we didn't, we didn't actually, if you, if you had a partner that was involved in making decisions, or if you had a partner was a financial stakeholder is going to sign off on this, they needed to be there. If they weren't there, we would not do the presentation. There was no way that we would do a presentation and this person is going to go, you know what, I'm going to go and give all this information, right? So what they're going to do is you're going to take your proposal, your pricing, uh, your pitch deck, go to this person and the first thing the person is going to say is how much is going to cost us, right? That's the first thing I say. So how much is this thing going to cost us? And they're going to, all they do is they forget about all the value, all the reasons, everything right out the window, right? It diminishes your sales capability by more than 90%. Because here's the thing, the person who they're going to for the consideration doesn't have a relationship with you. They don't know who you are. They don't know what your capabilities. They don't know anything. All you're relying on is the person that you presented to presenting you to the person. So it's a complete waste of time your presentation with somebody if they're not the decision maker, if they're not going to write the check, right? So here's the thing. This is how you make sure that you eliminate this objection before this objection happens. And I'm super clear because I'll sit there and say, listen, uh, and uh, uh, at the end of the day, we know that there is a consideration and there are other people involved, other stakeholders involved when it comes to making a decision on how your company grows or how your company uh, uh, walks into, right? So my question to you is, uh, do we need, what we'd like to do is make sure if you have any partners or wife, we'd like to invite them into the presentation so that they have the opportunity to be able to ask questions for themselves to make sure that they're clear about this objective that we're trying to solve or this plan that we're putting together to solve the objective you have. So it's really important for them to be there. There is no point in us doing a presentation to you uh, if you're not the person who's gonna pull the trigger. But if you're making a collective decision, which is really important, right? It is important that those people are in the room when you make a decision. So who do we need to invite into the room? Partner, wife, spouse. Now, if the person says, no, 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 I'm the decision maker, right? So let me clarify how your company buys, right? When you go to make a major purchase or investment, uh, what is the process that people make that procurement? How, how do actually, how do people buy? How do you get the check signed, right? Well, you know, we sit down, we have to talk it out. We generally talk about out in our meetings. Boom, then the decision maker, right? I've got to talk it out in my meeting. Who's in that meeting? Managing director, founder, owner, decision maker, right? Who's going to write the check, right? I have to go to my accountant, right? Uh, before I do this, I have to go and talk to my accountant. That's another objection of the partner, right? 
And I say, look, at the end of the day, does the accountant run your business, right? Does the accountant, is the accountant responsible for the sales, the, the income generation? Are they responsible for those things in your business uh, when it comes to you investing? Did you, you know, do you need to go to your accountant for every investment you make in this business? Right? And they go, well, we kind of need to figure out our cash flows, right? So at the end of the day, we're making, you know, uh, you've got to be really clear. And if you need to, get the accountant in on the meeting. If they are your advisor and their person is going to make the decision for you, right, because you're going to refer to them, then they need to be on the meeting, right? You must, must, must have the person who's going to sign the check in the room, right? Now, if it's the market director can sign a check up to a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, then you're fine. If your investment is less than a hundred grand, you're okay. If it's over a hundred grand, they can't make that decision, right? They're not going to make that decision. So understand that you need the partner. So the way we eliminate the partner is, hey, at the end of the day, it's really important that those people who are stakeholders in your business that make a strategic decision of how you grow this. And we're talking about adding 20 or 30 or 50 or 100% revenue in your business. Uh, it's really important that they attend this particular meeting because that's what we're talking about. And as a function of the business, I'm sure that they would be very interested in making sure that this is an outcome. So they need to be there. So and the other reason they need to be there is they need to be able to ask questions so that we can directly answer those questions in person. So if there are three people in that room, we're gonna have a meeting with three people, right? I will not have a meeting without, with, with a person who's not gonna make a decision. If they're gonna make a decision, no point in doing the meeting, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your time, right? I need to talk to my partner. This is a way that you eliminate the partner, is they need to be there so they can make and answer questions. Now, if there is a partner, I will always introduce myself to them before the meeting. Hey, looking forward to seeing you. Just want to ask you a couple of questions from your perspective. I've asked Bob or Mary or Sue a bunch of questions. I just want to make sure that, uh, that we're covering those things from you. Do you mind if I ask you, this is the objective that's been set out. Here's why that objective is important. Would you like to add, add to that? Uh, or would you like to change that? Anything else? No, no, I'd like to add that. No, we need to do this. Great. So what you're doing is you're very quickly meeting that person, having a conversation over the phone, right? And you're building a little bit of rapport before you get there. Or if you can't do that, send them an email explaining who you are, why you're here, and what's going to be covered in the presentation before you get there. So at least all the stakeholders know a little bit about you and what's going on before they get there, right? So next, uh, can I talk to your refer references or testimonials? I get this. This happens very, this only happens in the new for newbies right uh this will happen for newbies the reason why if anybody asks you for this by the way uh they're not going to buy anybody asks you for this 95 percent absolute certainty even if they talk to a refer a reference or a testimonial they will not buy your program they'll not buy your, your product or your service right can i talk to your references or your testimonials is a uh, i don't believe you uh i don't trust you um, uh, this is my way of stalling this decision. I don't want to make, I don't want to say no, but this is my way of stalling this whole sales process. Give me somebody I can talk to. Um, and if I like it, then I'll buy it. No. Right. Cause here's the way that you have, if, well, by the way, if this does come up, uh, as an objection, you've realized that you actually have not sold this person. They don't trust you. They don't believe you. Uh, um, uh, and this is a stalling tactic. This is an absolute stalling tactic. A lot of people get this now. If you talk to my champions and ask my champions if they get this question, very rarely does it ever come up. Rarely, rarely. I, in my lifetime of being doing sales for 30 years, uh, this might have come up maybe five times in my entire 30 year sales career. Five times in my 30 years, somebody says, I need to talk to somebody who, who you've worked with, right? If it's, so, if it's just something that's coming up regularly, you are doing something in your approach, right, that is giving doubt in the mind of the person that you're dealing with right so here's how i handle uh, if somebody wants to talk to somebody say listen um uh first of all uh um i'm uh, i'd like to say that our clients right uh, uh like their privacy right uh, at the end of the day it is not the responsibility of my clients to sell my services because if you decide to join us or you decide to come and join our team and benefit from the service we provide we talk about 30 businesses a week and the last thing you want is 30 phone calls from other businesses asking you how we're going or how we did right and so you don't want to do that right because i know that we're going to do a great job and so this is one of the reasons why we do not hand out references. We have testimonials and we have case studies. These are the people who benefit from what we do. And we have those case studies there. This is to demonstrate our capability. But in terms of providing you a personal reference, 
uh, generally we don't we don't do that. And at the end of the day, we know that uh, uh, ultimately we have to ask their permission. Then we've got to tee up a calendar time for you, and that's going to create some uh, that's going to create some uh, sticking points. Uh, at the end of the day, we just don't do it. Right, we don't do it. Because right now, you don't want 30 people calling your business saying, hey, how do we go? You want to be focused on handling the business that we give you, not uh, selling our services to other people or competitors into the marketplace, right? Would that be, you understand? That is the way that I would handle, uh, I need to talk to somebody. Because I'll guarantee you, right? Now, on the odd occasion, when I have relented and given somebody, uh, I have made a sale here or there. But I'm, I'm telling you, whenever this has happened, and it's only, like I said, it's only happened about five times in my career, most of the times they don't buy it. And if I look at all the champions that I've worked with, the people I've coached, when they get this question and they've actually given a reference and the person calls a reference, they still don't buy it, right? To me, when somebody asks this, it means to me that they don't believe what I'm telling them. They've already got doubt and they've already made a decision that they're not going to do this, right? Uh, if 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 this get, if we get this, so if you do get this, the best way to handle it is, hey, we've got this man who's got case studies, right? We don't get people to uh, engage our clients. It is not their business, right, to sell our services. Yes, they would be happy, they would be delighted. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to ask them that. That's not their responsibility. Uh, that is not their job. Their job is not to sell our services. And you you would understand that if you were our client, benefiting from what we do and getting the outcomes that we've we've. Uh, focused on here, that you don't want me to send you 30 people every week asking you how great we are, right? That would just be, uh, that would just be inconvenient. And also very rude for me to do that, right? So we just don't do it. Our case studies, our testimonials, this is our credibility, here's our guarantees, this is what we say that we do. Uh, at the end of the day, you're, you, you are protected and this is a risk-free uh, uh, thing that we provide. <clears throat> so that's how you handle, but cannot talk to references or testimonials, right? So. You need to ask for the sale five or seven times, right? Some people don't even ask for the sale once. Some people don't ask. You do a presentation, you go, great, what do you think? And nobody buys, right? Because you didn't ask them to buy. You, you, they went straight to a think about it, right? You have to ask them, you have to ask the question. So would you like to go ahead with this program and get started on us helping you achieve those results of getting those 30, 50, 100 opportunities every month in your business? Would you like to go ahead with that? Yes or no? Don't do the yes or no bit. Nod when you say, right? Would you like to go ahead with that, right? That's why you should be doing your presentations on a Zoom. If you do it on the phone, right, just calling people on the phone, they've got to have something in front of them to look at whilst you're walking through them, right? So you're walking through what you're looking at. I used to get people, in, if I was doing a, a phone call, a sales, a sales call on a phone, doing somebody a presentation on a phone, where they couldn't see me, I used to get them to draw things out, write things, notes down, ask questions so they, they are actively engaged in listening because when they're listening, they're really zeroing in on what you've got to say, right? So there's this engagement on the phone. On video, I can see their eyes. They can see my eyes and I can see their eyes on video, right? We can see each other. If we can see each other, I can see if they're bored out of their mind. I can see if they're distracted. I can see if they're really intently interested. I can see them nodding and engaging, right? So you're gonna to have to ask people between five and seven, and sometimes you're gonna to have to ask people 12 times. Uh, I recently, last month, I got a sale. The person had, we, uh, uh, this person finally bought, right, finally bought after five years. Five years I asked, I've asked this person to buy dozens and dozens and dozens of times over five years. And then last month, they finally went, yep, we're in, right? Uh, I try, uh, my, my tactic with them was, look, hey, if this isn't going to happen now, it's just never going to happen. You need to go and find somebody else to help you, right? And they went, no, 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 we, we're in, right? So, I, so my strategy with them is I took it away from them. Right? I said, well, obviously, I'm not the person that you need to. You've never, if you haven't made the decision in five years, you're never going to make the decision. So you know what? I wish you all the very best of luck. Go and find somebody else. Here's, here's a list of names that I would recommend. You need to go work with them. And they went, no, 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 we want to work with you. Bang, it closed the deal. But I had asked them, I, if I calculated how many times in the five years, I asked them to buy, right? Probably 30, 40 times, 50 times, I asked them to buy, 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 buy. And eventually they bought, right? That's persistent and being relentless, right? So understand, you're gonna to have to ask a minimum of five, or seven times, how do you do this? What do you think we should go to from here? Is a great question to ask once you've done the demonstration, not shown the price, you haven't got to the price, you haven't got to how you work together, just when you've done the demo, right? 
you've done the demonstration, this is what we do, so great, what do you think we should go to from here? I'm gonna walk you through the cadence of this. This question, it's an old Sandler, it's a, uh, Sandler School is a sales uh, training program, uh, uh, highly recommended, it's one of the best sales training programs in the world. Um, uh, but one of the things they talk about in this process of selling is ask people to make a consideration, right? Where do you think we should go to from here? And they're gonna go, well, I don't know, you tell me. The client's gonna go, well, I don't know, you tell me. Okay, great, let me walk you through how we work together. Is that okay with you? Great, this is how it works together. So this is how, it's, uh, this is how it works, right? Are you okay with the strategy, the solution, and how it'll get you uh, to your outcome, right? Are you okay with that? You're okay with the strategy put together? You're okay with the program put together? Are you okay with that? Great, any questions? Awesome. So where do you think we should go to from here? Um, I don't know, you tell me. Okay, so. Uh, are you okay or clear on how we work together, right? Let me walk you through how we work together. Yep, great. Uh, this is how we work together. This is how we get started. This is the person that's going to be involved, your account management team. Uh, this is the process we go through uh, uh, and how we work together. Are you okay with that? Any questions on that? No? Great. Next question. Where do you think we should go to from here? Yeah, I don't know. Um, how much, now, they might say at this stage, or well, how do we get started? You've got a sale. Right? Or they might say, oh, how much is it going to cost us? Great, right? So uh, are you okay with the investment in your program? Any questions? Here's what the investment is. Here are three options. Of the three options, which would you choose? Option number one, option number two, option number three. Or option number one or option number two. Uh, we'd like to take option number two. Great, right? Any questions about the investment? No, we're all good. Great. Where do you think we should go to from here? Now, at this point, the person's going to say, great, I think we should just get started. They might turn around and say, let's get started, right? So then you're gonna go, great, you're okay with how we get started? How we begin your project? Any questions? No, we're good? Great. Where do you should go to from here? Okay, uh, uh, I guess, how do I pay for this thing, right? Uh, uh, or, uh, uh, great, so what do we do? Right, great, let me walk you through how we get paid, right? Prospects okay, let's get started, right? Let me just go back through that process just to give you this process, right? So where do you think should you go to from here? You wanna ask at the, at the end of the demonstration part of your presentation. Not, don't do this all the way through to get the sale. When you ask this question, they're gonna, it's like they're leaning in, right? They're gonna either say, this is what I wanna know, or uh, you tell me, I don't know, you tell me, great, okay, let me walk through this, right? Are you okay with the strategy, the solution, how it'll get you uh, to your outcome? Yes, any questions? No, we're good, great. Where do you think we should go to from here? Um, I don't know, you tell me. Okay, was it, I'll walk you through how we work together. This is how we're gonna to work together. Boom, 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 right? Great, are you okay and clear on how we work together? Yes, any questions about that? No, great. Where do you think we should go to from here? And in that moment, they go, you know what? Uh, oh, price, how much is it gonna cost? Great, let me walk you through the price and the investment. So is it okay for walk you through? Cool, so the investment in this program, we have three options. Option one, this is a basic option. Most people don't do that. Option two is the one that actually gives you all the value, all the benefits, all the things that you need to do, upsell, right? And this is where most of our clients start with us right here in option two. Now we have option three, this is the enchilada package, the whole enchilada package. We have uh, everything in here. Uh, it's, uh, it's the whole thing on steroids. And we have option three. Of the three options, right, Bob, which of these three would you, do you believe suits you best? I think option number two is the one we need to go with. Great, right? Are you okay with the investment, the program? Any questions? Where do you think we should go to from here? Uh, I guess we should get started, right? It's one of the easiest ways to let the customer or the prospect walk themselves in to getting started with you, right? Are you okay on how you get started? How do we begin the pro and uh, how and how we begin the project, right? Any questions? No, great. Where do you think we should go to from here, right? So, prospect says okay. Let's get started, right? So, with that, I'm just gonna and Skype. I'm just going to stop the share for a moment. Uh, get back to you. There's a whole bunch of people here uh, 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 spending some time. Questions? Any questions? I'm happy to answer your questions on what we've shared today on today's training. Any questions? Biggest takeaway, just type in the biggest takeaway you've had. Uh, I'll give you a moment here. Biggest take you've ha had in today's presentation. Biggest takeaway. Any takeaways? Type one if you can still hear me or see me. <laughs> Chris is one. <laughs> awesome. B biggest takeaways you've had out of handling objections. Biggest takeaways.
Any questions? Having the objections at the start of the presentation and relaxing the tone. Absolutely, Zaf. Getting the objections right up front. Make it clear that, uh, that every decision maker is present. Absolutely. If you don't have every decision maker in the presentation, there is no point. No point. I would not do the presentation. I would say, pass. Let's get that person on the, on the call, right? Um, uh, no, I don't need all the decision makers. If, unless I'm dealing with a decision maker in a qualifying call, but I'm just uh, uh, qualifying questions, I just want to make sure, right, that, uh, that they're there. If they're not there, then I need to meet them. If they're not there, then I need to meet them. Uh, the transition to a close, you like that? That's awesome. Uh, the basic objections at the start, yes. Uh, get the money issue taken care of up front, yes. Absolutely, get the money out of the way up front. Hey, look, this is gonna cost you money and our fee is this to this. Are you cool with that? Yes. You know, uh, you know with, with, uh, when, when people are, uh, uh, are interested in working with me in, in champions, they know what they've got to pay before they get there, right? They know what they've got to pay before they get there. There's no, that we don't want to talk about, like at the end of the day, if you're considering money, then you shouldn't, you shouldn't be talking to me because you know you're gonna to have to make an investment, right? If you, if it's the same thing with your services. I'm gonna to talk to you about Facebook ads. I know I have to spend money doing that. It's gonna cost me money. So I need to know what I'm in for, right? Uh, the follow up and close the deal within 24 to 48 hours, absolutely. Uh, if it's longer, it's important to nurture them until the time you, you call. Absolutely, Chris. Following up all the way through is really, really important. The, one, the number one reason, so here's the thing. Now, I'll, I'll share with you a tactic, right, that I've used to get, to get the no. I want to get to the no as quickly as possible. I don't want a maybe, right? You're either yes, you're buying, or no, you're not buying, you're out, right? A maybe to me is a no. A maybe is a no. I need to think about it. That's a no. And money, that's a no, right? So I have to turn that maybe into a definitive defined no. If I don't do that, then I'm missing out on the opportunity, right? So, or, or I'm wasting time. I'm building an emotional uh, 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 um, uh, expectation for myself, right? So the way that I deal with uh, closing, if I don't get the answer within 48 hours, or if I don't get the answer in the week, and they say, hey, come back to us next month, I'll say, hey, why don't we, why, let's just leave it. Right now, I'm going to take that no, you're not interested, and that we're not going to be working together. Is that okay with you? Just say no, right? Uh, if it's no for not now, I understand that, right? But, uh, but at the end of the day, I just, I'm going to say no, this is not for you. I'm going to go work with a competitor of yours uh, who says yes, <laughs> right? I'm just going to go to the market with your plan, right? Uh, I'll take it as a no. If I, I will put this in a note or in a message to people, say, hey, uh, just following up from what I'm doing, right? Uh, making sure. Uh, at the end of the day, my big question to you is, are we going to get go ahead with this? Are you still interested in going ahead with this? If I don't hear back from you within 48 hours, uh, I'll assume that this is not for you and that we will actually go and pursue competitors in your marketplace. So you want to take it away from them, right? Then it's a definitive no. A no is a no is a no, right? No, not right now, I get. No, in three months' time, I get. No, in six months' time, I get it. But I need to know it's a no. If I, if I don't get a definitive, if somebody says follow up next month, thank you, I'm saying this is a no. Obviously, you're not interested in doing this. This wasn't important for you in your business. Um, uh, and obviously, this is something for a later time. So I'll take that as that you're not interested in working with us. Thank you very much for telling us. I appreciate that. No. People don't want to tell you no. That's why they don't tell you no. People want to go, ghost you, right? People want to ghost you and uh, uh, will ghost you because they don't want to say no. They don't want to disappoint you, right? They figure they're letting you down, right? They're letting you down because they said, this is what I wanted to do. At the same time, this is an ego trip. This is a thing for them that they're not, not just letting you down, but they're making themselves look like they've wasted time and they don't, nobody wants to do that, right? So I want to get to the definitive no, right? Just tell me no. I need a straight look in the eye and say, no, I am not interested in this. This thing that I said that was really important to me, I am not interested in this thing that I said is really important to me. I want them to look me in the eye and tell me that, right? right? It's very hard for people to do that. So give them an out. Say, hey, if it's not for you, you're out. Thank you. Next, right? Take that emotional baggage off your uh, sales because what most people do, what salespeople do, what people in sales do, is they spend the money before they get the money, 
right? They'll go, great, they're going to get started next week. And then next week turns into, great, they're going to start in two weeks' time. And you're sitting there thinking, oh, this deposit's going to happen in two weeks' time, right? And it just won't happen because you've lost the sale, right? You've lost the sale. So understand that this is important. Um, Simon, uh, I did cancel the setup to sign now. Well, you can do that. If you say, hey, look, if it's money, I'll tell you what, let me help you out. We'll cover the setup cost. Would you like to get started? Yes. I, pre I preferably don't like to do that. I like people to invest in setup because in my invoice, a line item is strategy, creative, setup, right? Team, all that sort of stuff. There's a line item that's in the invoice. Setup, right? And if I, if, they, if, they, if I give them a discount on the setup, then I cross the discount out and that discount up turns up on the invoice. Right, so they see that what I'm telling them is true. There is value in what I do. Right, if you don't charge a setup fee now, you should. Be. You should be charging setup fee. You're mad to not charge a setup fee because that's time. Right, everybody knows you've got to do setup. Yeah. Any other questions? I'll take any questions you've got. Thank you for joining me this afternoon or this morning, depending on where you are in the world. Don Ferguson, good to see you here. Hope this has been helpful and useful. Um, uh, any questions? I'm happy to answer a question. Otherwise, I'm going to say thank you and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Any questions? I'll take one more question. We all good? <laughs> uh, the subject line is whatever the subject line, whatever you want the subject line to be, James. That's the subject line. <laughs> any other questions? No, we're all good. Okay, all helpful. So we all know how to close deals. All know that now we've got a hundred percent close rate. Um, um, uh, you have a question. So ask the question, Jake. Just type it in. Ask the question. Or James, what I'll do is I'll unmute you, and you can ask the question directly. You there, James? Yeah, yeah. I was typing it as, as you were talking. Um, what do you do when a customer does want to move forward, but they want some kind of promise that you don't go after their competitors right away? Oh, so you mean exclusivity? Yeah. Oh. I love exclusivity. Okay. So if you want exclusivity, then they've got to pay a high price for exclusivity. So here's an example of how I've dealt with an exclusivity question, right? So somebody says, I don't want you to work with my competitors. Great. So um, my question is, can you handle 250,000 inquiries in the city of Chicago? So you're telling me <laughs> that you can have all the inquiries in the market. If you can handle all the inquiries and you give me the budget, I'll exclusively work with you, never work with anybody else again in Chicago, right? So right now, do you have a call center that can handle uh, uh, 20, 30,000 phone calls per month for your service? No? Oh, so what are people gonna do if they can't call you, right? They have to go and call a competitor. So, so what I can do is that we will give you this number of inquiries based on your investment and how you resource uh, us, uh, and then you will own the deal because they choose you first, right? But at the end of the day, if you want to exclude, we do a 10 mile exclusion zone if there's less than 100,000 people um, on Facebook. If there's less than 100,000 people as an audience on Facebook in their market, we will, we will uh, give them a 10 mile exclusion zone. We won't work with somebody within 10 miles, right? I like that. Yeah. Um, um, but if you want, if you say, give me the state of, you know, uh, Illinois or give me the state of New York, great. Uh, what I need from you is a budget of about a million dollars a month in ad spend. Uh, we need to make sure you've got a call center that can handle, uh, right now the, the, the 25,000 inquiries per month for the service. Uh, we need to make sure that you've got at least a hundred teams on the ground to go and service the customer, uh, with your product. If you can do that. Uh, my fee is going to be at least a quarter million dollars per month, plus the ad spend. Uh, yeah, we're looking about a five to ten million dollar deal. Are you in? Uh, yes, John, I'm in. Yeah, great. I'll work for you exclusively in New York City. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so, so exclusivity. So when some like I've, one of my biggest clients said, you know, "Do not work, you know, uh, 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 you know, I don't want you to work with my biggest competitor." I said, well, the only way that's going to happen is if you give me more money than the biggest competitor so I can make you number one. 
I love it. So if you're happy to do that, if you're happy to do that, I'll never work with anybody in the market, right? So you have to give me more money than they spend on marketing right now, right? Um, and then, then you'll dominate the marketplace because that's the only way we can beat the competitor. I right? love it. it. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, so when I do get that, right? But I'll sit there and say, like, like I've had people like, you know, they're in, I've had people in, they're in, um, you know, they're, they're uh, uh, I'll give you a classic example. So uh, there was a, a practice of physical therapists and they have a practice in Orlando, they have a practice in Tampa, they have a practice in uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, they also had a practice in, uh, they also had another practice over in Jacksonville. So they have four practices. Yeah, that's all north. Range, right? So yeah, it's all, all north. Yeah, all north part of Florida, right? However, yeah. Jacksonville has a population of four and a half million people. One practice, right? Yeah. So he's saying, I want exclusivity in Jacksonville, I want exclusivity in Tampa, I want exclusivity in Orlando, I want exclusivity, right? We want to, we want to, we want to uh, give you all four locations, but we want to control each of the cities. Yeah, they do. Well, yeah. So I said, well, okay, great. So you're going to have to give me a hundred thousand dollar ad budget for Jacksonville. You're going to have to give me a hundred thousand dollar ad, ad budget for Tampa. You're going to have to give me a hundred thousand dollars for Orlando, right? Um, uh, you know, you're going to have to give me more than a hundred thousand dollars. So we're in for four hundred thousand dollars a month. We can do it. We'll give you all the leads. Oh no, I can't afford to do that, right? Yeah, but you just told me that you wanted to own the market, and that's what it's going to cost if you want to own the market. You're telling me that all you want to get all the inquiries. So that number one, you mean you have to handle all the inquiries, right? But if I, but if you did that right now, if we said, right, let's handle all the inquiries, that's going to put you out of business because you know, you can't handle it, right? So let's work with your plan of adding X amount of percentage to your business. And at the end of the day, right, you're not going to get every deal. It's just unrealistic. Yeah, I love it. So, here, so here's the point. You know, I often say to people, if you want a great result or an outstanding result, you need to resource me. If you under-resource me, I'll guarantee you a mediocre result. You get to choose. Under-resource <laughs> me, get a mediocre result. Or if you resource me, I'll guarantee you an outstanding result. What do you want to do? Right? Your, conf your confidence is insane. Well, no, because but it's not confidence. It's the truth. No, right? I know. I know. Like if, I know. You, if you give me money, if you give me a lot of money, right, and I've got I've got a volume of cash, I can I know that I can use a significant volume of cash to get a really big result, right? Right. But if yeah. you don't give me enough budget, like for example, in a, if I was looking at solar leads in the market, those of you listening, this happens a lot, right? But people are people. Are, you think that the client sets a budget? No, you set the budget for the client, not the other way around. So I had a, a person sit there and say. Uh, what budget did the, the, the solar company want to spend? And they said 1500 bucks a month. Well, I said, well, they're not going to make a sale. They're not going to get any sales for $1,500 a month. They're going to get 15 clicks and that's it. 100 bucks a click, right? You know, 15 clicks and that's it. Out of 15 clicks, not enough people. You need 100, 200 clicks. So the budget that that, that, that solar company had to spend was 30 grand a month. If they spent 30 grand a month, they would make you know, between two hundred dollars and $300,000 in return in sales yeah right but 1500 bucks they'll get nothing crickets right and then they're going to go well this didn't work well no it's not that it didn't work it's the fact that there's not enough resource or money into the campaign to get the result right so we've got to look at the cost of, not the cost per click we need to look at the cost of acquisition right so in our world james in the in the, in, the, in, the, in our marketing world uh, you know, and I don't know why people don't do this, by the way, James, right? I have no idea why people do not go and spend money on Facebook ads or AdWords to generate clients because it's the cheapest thing you can do. It's the easiest and it's the cheapest thing you can do to go and get appointments, right? But everybody wants to go cheap. Everybody wants to go free, you know, scrape leads, do the email, pick up the phone, they want to do all that, which is fine, right? But inbound leads are actually not very expensive at all, right? And so here's the thing. If I said to you, James, that you had to spend $1,000 to make a $24,000 sale, would you go and spend $1,000? I would do that for the rest of my life. You'd do that for, exactly. Because you know that every time I spend $1,000, I'm going to make $24,000, right? Yeah. So then you go, well, if I spend two grand, I'm going to make $48,000, right? Yeah. If I spend three grand. If you made $1,000 to $24,000, I would put twenty three thousand dollars more in your pocket. <laughs> well, exactly, because you know, because you know, right? Because you're looking at the ROI, right? You're looking, you're looking yeah. at the ROI. 
You know, yeah. if I said to me, drop a grand and make three, would you drop a grand to make three? I would. Yeah. If, yeah. if you gave me a thousand bucks and I just lived it, said, said to you, James, here's three thousand dollars catch, give me a thousand. Right? Yeah. You would be you'd be showing up the thousands, right? Because I'm it's guaranteeing that, you more than what you gave me, right? You, know? you can't you can't find those those investments. You can't find it in real estate. You can't find it in in the stock market. It's outrageous. No. In in marketing, you can. In marketing, you can. You can ten x your investment in marketing. You can a thousand x your investment in marketing. I'm looking for me. My minimum return is three to one. If I spend a grand and I can make three, I'm in. Right. Hell yeah. Show me, show me, you know, I'll give you a thousand dollars all day long for every three thousand dollars you give me back. Guaranteed. No problem at all. Right. I'll even take two for one. I'll even go one for one. I'll even go break even if I know what the back end is. Right. I, that's often what I do as a marketer. I'm, my, my, my least uh, uh, investment is just to break even. Right. I didn't make any money, but it didn't cost me any money either to acquire a customer. So know? let me ask, oh, to acquire the customer. So, so why would you do that? Because I know my back end, building that relationship and that back end is worth so much more than breaking even at the front, right? Okay. They're, they're, okay. So, doing break, so I, would do, I would do a self-eliminating offer where my cost per cost is exactly what I paid for the lead, right? I would yeah. do that all day long. I, if I drop $100,000, I make $100,000 and I break even, what I've got yeah. is a whole bunch of people I can go to and back and end and sell in the yeah. market and get you in, okay. in the sales. So I would do that all day long. I would do a break-even deal all day long. If no, somebody here could come to me and say, "Don, give me give me ten thousand dollars, and I'll give you ten thousand dollars back exactly, break even." I'm in, right? Yeah, I'm in. No problem at all because I know that the back end of that is going to be so much more, right? So, sure. so understand that for some reason it's an acquisition strategy. The number one question I often ask people is, "How much does it cost you to acquire a customer?" And I go, "I don't know." Okay, well, tell me what a customer is worth to you. And I go, "You know, ten grand." Okay, great. So ten thousand dollar customer here, sitting here, cash ten grand. How much would you pay me for that ten thousand dollars? So if I ask you, James, there's a ten thousand dollar customer sitting here right here, ready to go, ready to buy. How much of that ten thousand dollars would you give me? Well, that really depends on on my closing ratio, wouldn't it? No, I'm asking you. If I gave you, if here's a ten thousand dollar customer, guaranteed, right? It's sitting there, they're going to give you ten grand. Oh, okay, How much okay, of that okay. Ten okay. grand are you going to give me? Right? Yeah. Uh, 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 I, I might have missed uh, how much I made. What did you say the person makes? So I'm going to ask you, uh, James, here's $10,000 cash. Here's a customer that's going to spend $10,000 on your product. Of that 10 grand, how much would you pay me to buy that 10 grand? Simple question. Yeah, sorry, I, I, I couldn't. No, no, no. What happened was I got disconnected. Yeah. Um, uh, How much well, would you give me? I lost you. Type in the answer. Anybody who's listening to this, type in, if I gave you a $10,000 customer, how much would you give me for that 10 grand customer? Just type in the word, type in. Chris says he can give me $1,000 to $2,000, right? Uh, um, hey, I'm back. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So I give you ten k. Uh, how much are you give me back? How it says I'll give you five k. Give me fifty percent. That's interesting. James, how much would you give me for a ten thousand dollar client? What was the number? Ten thousand for ten thousand? Ten? No, I said I'm going to give you like this is not an this is a no brainer question, James. I'm asking you. I got ten thousand dollars cash. I'm going to give you ten grand. Ten grand. You give me how much money for that ten thousand dollars? How much? And I lost you. Chris says ten thousand dollars based on what you said. Yeah, I, I keep I keep losing you. I'm sorry. Just say the number. <laughs> Yell it out. Oh, okay, I'm back again. My internet is going back and forth. Um, Mate, I know I can hear you saying your internet's broken. Just yell out a number. Tell me a number. Ten thousand. You would pay me ten thousand dollars for a ten thousand dollars sale. No. <laughs> no. So give me another number. Um, I'm going to yeah, give you okay. Let's go this how way. Is this hard, hard. James, how is this hard? No, let's, I'm let's, going to give you a ten thousand dollar customer. I'm going to say, James, how much would you buy that ten thousand dollar customer for? 
5,000. So you would give me 50%. So that means if you want 10 customers, $100,000, you would give me 50 grand cash. That means you've given me a $50,000 budget to give you $100,000. You see? Yeah. yeah. If somebody said, so the fair deal would be, uh, on average, somebody would say between $500,000 to $1,000 about the average of what somebody would spend on a $10,000 customer, right? If they, if they were to say that. Well, if I said, right, great. If I, so you're telling me, so for every 10 customers I give you, you're going to give me $5,000, right? That's what I said. Yeah, so now I've, got a, a, now I've established a budget, right? I've established yeah. a budget with a client. So if I go to you and say, hey, our goal is to get you 30 opportunities. Your goal is to close one third of those in the deals. Your investment's going to be five grand and you're going to make 50. Are you good with that? Very good with that. Right. That's how you close on margin. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, um, I've watched a lot of your videos and I see what you do. And you did that to me when we had that lawyer talk. I get it. Yeah. But that's the talk. That's the price talk you want to have with clients. Like I've yeah. sat down, I mean, I've got a look at Simon and Tracy who, uh, who uh, came to me and said, Hey, uh, we just closed the deal for hundred for hundred eighty thousand dollars. We asked for sixty thousand dollars up front, and they said yes. And then we're getting five thousand a month. And I said, "Great, what's a client worth to them?" And they said, "Well, every sale is a hundred thousand. They make thirty thousand dollars margin for every sale, right?" Well, shit, three sales, and they've paid. If they do three sales in an entire year, you're free, right? Now, how many sales do they normally make on average per month? Well, they make five of these deals minimum per month, so it's five hundred thousand. But they do that with no marketing. Now they're going to put your marketing in place. If they could double that to another five, right? That means for the next 11 months, you're working for free. It's, it, right? it's incredible. Yeah. You're yeah. asking the questions to determine exactly how much you should ask uh, in return. Yeah. And, and the, numbers yeah. just makes, the numbers just make sense. You're not guessing. Yeah. Or you can do, one of the things you can do is you can do conversion, right? So I sit there and say, hey, out of a thousand leads, if we would aim for a 1% conversion, that's 10 sales right? And I'll go, thousand leads, 10 sales, that sucks, right? We'll go, hang on a second here, just a second, right? At 10 sales, at $10,000 a sale, that's $100,000, right? Now, there's 90% of those, 99% of those people haven't bought, right? So we've got some opportunities. But here's the thing, right? Um, my fee for those thousand leads is $10,000, right? Yeah. Right. Now, if a customer says, oh, $10,000 is too much, well, hang on a second. We're talking about a 1% conversion. You said to me you convert 19%, right? <laughs> right? You said you convert 90%. I'm talking about this is your return on investment with 1%, right? Yeah. How is this a no-brainer for you? Not a no-brainer for you. Oh, it is a no-brainer. Great. I get it. Put 10 grand down, make 100, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's how you establish budgets with people, right? Okay. So how yeah, much yeah. are you willing to... So, the, so if you look at the cost per lead model, the pay, the pay per lead model, right? If you work out on average per, 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 per cost per lead, especially if we're dealing like roofing leads and stuff like that, a roofer will probably pay between 50 and $70 per lead, right? However, to get that lead is probably gonna cost you between 15 and $20. So they're gonna give you $50, you're gonna make $30, right? To $50 profit on every lead that you give them. So then you ask the, the, the roof, how many leads do you want, right? I want 100 leads. Five grand, thank you very much. Your profit, $3,500, easy peasy, right? Yeah. Guaranteed, we're going to get you 100 leads, we'll get you 100 leads. Five grand down, 100 leads, right? The, the yeah. pay per lead model is a very lucrative model if you're looking at pay per lead. It's now way more, lucrative, say, uh, way more say, lucrative than doing monthly retainer. When you, yeah, when you say 100 leads, are they all pre-qualified or? They're booked. I'll give you 100 appointments for, for uh, uh, okay. well, no, they're qualified. They're, they're, they're filtered. Yeah, they're filtered and qualified. They're filtered and qualified. You have to follow them up. We're not going to follow them up. If you want us to follow them up, then we're going to charge you 100 bucks a lead. Okay. Now, my cost on that is going to be 40 bucks. So I get, to, I get 60 bucks every lead. Every time you get a lead, I get 60 bucks. I give you 10 leads, I make 600 bucks. I give you 100 leads, I make $6,000. Profit, profit, net profit, net. That's a good deal, yeah? It's a great deal. Yeah. 
So to me, the paper lead model is a very, very popular model. I know people, may, the, the problem with the paper lead model is people go to the low market. The low market can't afford those leads. You need volume, right? You need volume leads, you need, you need cash. So you go to the guys that need a thousand leads a month because a thousand leads a month, they're gonna pay you 20, 30 grand a month, right? So you think that's an easier- If they're paying step? you 20, 30 grand a month, you're keeping 15 of that or 10 of that as profit. That's huge. You get three or four clients like that, you're making a half a million dollars cash, right? A year in net profit. It's beautiful. Is it? It feels like it's an easier sale that way. Yeah, but you've got to only, you've got to, you've got to follow through. You've got to get the asset, right? You've got to get the results, right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So you can say, hey, we're going to do pay per lead. Here's an invoice for five thousand. We'll guarantee you hundred leads, right? Hundred bucks a lead. Now. Is, is, there a, is there a commitment to, uh, to do a year's worth of that or how does that work? Is it just a... Uh... Paper lead is no, you don't need the commitment. You just, pay, you just go back and say you want more. If you give them leads and they close deals on, on your leads, they're just going to keep buying them off you. Okay. So they just want more. You'll have clients staying with you for years on the paper lead model. It's beautiful. But you need to know what you're doing, right? You need to know how to run Facebook ads for the market. And the best way to do paper lead is to go niche, niche, niche it and niche. So you might say, we only do Invisalign leads, right? How many Invisalign leads do you want? We only give you Invisalign customers. How many of them do you want, right? I want 50, great. 50 is gonna cost you $5,000. Because one yeah. Invisalign deal is gonna cost you, six, one, one patient is gonna cost you five or six grand, right? So now I'm gonna work out how cheaply I can buy qualified Invisalign leads. That's, that's, the, that's the deal, that's the thing that you have to learn. You have to learn how to get the sales, get the deals, right? Uh, they've got to learn how to convert the deal. I love it. Thank you. So yeah, but that's a whole different business model. It's an it's a, a much easier model. It's an easier model, but you but the but the, the 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 barrier or the bottleneck is you have to know what you're doing, right? If you don't know what you're doing, it, you're gonna it's gonna cost you money. You're gonna go broke real fast, right? That's the risk. The risk is that you blow your money and you go broke. You go backwards. That's the risk. Oh, yeah. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, because okay. if you burn the budget, you make no money. You're going to you're going to go broke. You're going to you're going to you're going to pay for the leads. You're going to pay to give somebody the leads. You don't want to do that. That's yeah. the danger, yeah. right? It's an easy business model, but most people screw it up. Most people don't know how to do it. The the, okay. the reason they they screw it up is they don't do their homework. They don't they haven't worked out the 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 they haven't worked out who the buyer is. They go for too small a buyer, right? You need guys who have budgets of fifty grand more. Uh, per month they're the budgets you know you need to go to bigger companies right because big okay. companies will buy that They'll, they understand the value of those leads they understand it right yeah. Yeah. little businesses don't understand right because they're, they're terrible closers so with that Oof. i'm going to mute you uh here uh james thank you very much. so with that um uh thank you for showing up uh, really appreciate it. I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I will be here tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, 8 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on a Monday. Uh, we're going to be talking about other tactical things that you can do to apply to your business. Thank you for watching. Thank you for showing up. I look forward. If you know anybody who needs to be here, take them to consultingunleashed.com forward slash go, G-O. Uh, there's a whole new training program in there. If you haven't jumped on that, go and grab that. Make sure, make sure you grab it. But uh, the registration for this uh, this training is on there every single day. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.